they're one of the oldest teams in the country. You know, they're, uh, you know, Ryan and Ingram and Weathers and the guys they've added, they have collectively, they've played hundreds of games. And so uh, I think that experience has really helped them. Right. Well, you're you're going to be successful if you defend the three point line that well. And uh, teams have not shot good percentages from three against them. And uh, you know they really put an emphasis on protecting their paint while at the same time defending the three. It's what we try to do. And, uh, you know, I think it starts, though, with uh, great intention by their players, by their, by their coaching staff. They've done a great job uh, guarding the ball. You know, you can't have a good defense if you don't guard the ball you don't, and, and, and if you don't guard pick-and-roll defense. And they've done that. And so it's not a team where you can look and say, all right, you need to drive him or attack him. Uh, they all are capable defenders, um, and they have five guys that defend it together. And then the last thing is they, they hold you to one shot. You know, it's the, they don't give up offensive rebounds, really, for the most part. And so uh, that limits what you can do on the offensive end if you can only get one shot. John, you, you mentioned R.J. Davis has been through it over there a couple of times. Obviously, he's being used <clears throat> in a different role this year. How are you seeing them use him differently, and specifically what challenges does he present maybe differently compared to years past? Yeah, man, RJ uh, Davis, he's uh, he's had a great year. He's had as good of a year as anybody. Uh, he's played with uh, such a great pace, and he's done it by uh, being elite at uh, shooting the three and getting to the foul line. You know, and those are that's a great recipe for – a guard that can score a lot of points. And then not to mention, he's got the total freedom to shoot any shot. So you can't relax for one second. Uh, looks like they're doing some different things for him on offense to get him open, and they have a different team. Uh, but it's the pace that he plays with. You know, you got to find him in transition. When he has the ball, he's going to attack the basket. Uh, he's in pick and roll a lot, uh, and they have shooting around him. Uh, but then he's also a guy where they can run staggers and different things for him where you need to have great talk off the ball. And um, similar to what we just faced at Virginia Tech, they do some of that. Uh, but he's just a great player, a winning player, uh, plays both ends of the ball, not just offense. And uh, he's had a terrific year. We know it's going to be a great challenge guarding him. John, what's it say about Jared that he's able to affect the game in so many ways? I mean, it feels like he can kind of do whatever you guys need on that particular night. You know, you think about Jared through the whole course of this season, and he's um, he's uh, he does whatever whatever's re required to win. And you mentioned last game. You know, he may not have had his best shooting game, but he has ten rebounds. Uh, the game before, he comes up with the two biggest steals of the game. You know, when the, when the game's on the line, uh, that same game in the middle of the second half, we are stagnant a little bit, and he just went on a scoring spree. Uh, he's defended some of the best players we've played in an unorthodox way. He's guarded fours. He's guarded ones, twos, threes, uh, even fives at times, the way we switch. He's just a winning player, and uh, you trust him on the court, and you trust that at some point uh, he's going to make a, a winning play, but also you believe his shots are going to go in. Yeah, Coach, you mentioned that North Carolina does a really good job limiting the other team's offensive rebounds. On the other side of things, they do a really good job getting their own offensive rebounds. How do you guys stop that? Yeah, you, you just you got to be tough. You know, you have to be tough. You have to have uh, uh, you have to have each other's backs. And because, look, they're great at getting – Baycott demands a lot of attention, you know, naturally going to the boards. Uh, but also Ingram's all over the boards. And then they'll send a third perimeter at times four – and so you have to have each other's back. So if somebody comes over to help, well, and somebody better help him. And, uh, you know, we've, we've done a good job with that collectively. And it's all about the fight. It's all about the mentality. you got to find a way to come up with the ball. And uh, it's really no different from Saturday, uh, although they're, like you mentioned, they're great at it. That's what they've done. It's what I've known them to do since I've been, you know, a freshman in college here. You know, it's, it's no different. And, uh you got to go in with the right mindset to that game to rebound.
Coach, you talked about a week or two ago about Sean Stewart and his ability and the reason you gave him some minutes. Is this the type of game where you can afford to give some of the younger, more experienced guys minutes, or is this, hey, the starters are going to play a majority of the game as more than they usually do? Well, I don't know if it's about any, anybody you can afford to play anybody. You want to play the guys that give you the best chance to win. And in these games, uh, one possession can make the difference. And so, you know, Sean has played because – I believe he's going to help us win, you know, whoever plays in that game. And, uh, you know, you talk about playing young guys. We play our young guys every game. You know, I talked about a couple of their transfers who have played hundreds of games. Uh, Jared, Caleb, and Sean, and TJ, they play 19. And uh, it's a little bit different. But I still believe, I don't care if they haven't seen this before or not, they're going to be ready for this. This is the reason you come to Duke, to play in games like this. And... Uh, I'm excited for them to have this opportunity. And uh, just like Virginia Tech was a great opportunity. John, last year, Tyrese, as the year went on, became one of the better perimeter defenders in the league. I know he went through the injury this year, so probably set him back a little bit. But have you seen him progress there? Is he getting back to that level again? Yeah, Tyrese has definitely gone back to that level. He's, he's, he's moving now the right way. It took him some time from the ankle. But I just love... Uh, it's funny how that works, Steve. The the defense and offense comes together a lot of the time. And uh, he's got uh, such a competitive edge. When he's guarding, he guards with uh, a tenacity that I love. And uh, he's done that, especially as of late. He's played some great defense on some of the best guards that we've played. Uh, you know, Gerard, Couture. Um, obviously, everybody will guard Davis this game, but he'll, I'm sure he'll guard him a, a fair share as well. And uh, that's important to have a guy like that. And then the thing that it's done is offensively, he's played with a huge swagger. You know, he's shooting the ball confidently. He's attacking the paint. He's playmaking. That's who we need him to be. When he's that way, there's not a better guard in the country. And uh, I'm uh, proud of how he's made a big jump here the last seven to 10 days. John, as, as ready as those young guys are for this, you know that this is a different atmosphere especially when you go over there how much does a guy like Jeremy who's been through this what three four times now how much does he help to kind of prepare these guys to let them know here's what you would need to expect yeah Jeremy uh, helps a great deal and he's done that throughout the season um, first time playing on the road first time neutral game uh, he's just been a steady force for us you know because Jeremy he doesn't get phased by much and especially this year, he's been a guy that's um, he's uh, been such a good leader with his demeanor, not getting phased by something that doesn't go his way. And uh, I expect him to do the same thing Saturday. He's been very, you know, he's been very vocal even before games. You know, lead, you know, days of preparation of what we need to do in order to win, and focusing on the game plan. And that's the thing you learn being in this game or any big time game. It's not about the crowd or about the hype. It's about the, the focus and the work. And uh, that's what Jeremy knows being in this game for a long time. Coach, since that win um, on Monday, what have been some points of emphasis for you and the guys in practice over the last couple of days? And what will be your mindset going into that atmosphere at Smith Center um, on Saturday? Well, uh, the first thing is we had a day off on Tuesday and our guys uh, – had to show up in class and take care of their business here. And uh, uh, yesterday we had a practice, which is good. And part of it, you want to get their bodies back moving. Uh, when you play two games in three days, it can take a toll on you. You know, it's, uh, it, it takes a couple days to get your body back. And for us, it's just building our defense. I think our defense is really taking a big time step. Uh, our defending Virginia Tech the way we did, our talk was great, our fight on the ball, uh, the, the, I've been asked about the rebounding battle today. I know it's a different team, but, you know, you out-rebound them 38 to 20. And so just trying to re reinforce some of the good things we did and then also understand for us as a team, yesterday it was all about us. Like, here's what we have to do better, you know, stepping up with our pick-and-roll coverages, you know, reviewing some of our, some of our offensive go-tos so we're connected and prepared. And uh, today we'll dive into Carolina more and tomorrow uh, before the game on Saturday. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Hubert Davis? What do you admire most about him, um, the job he's doing? Would he, if you couldn't vote for yourself, would he be your vote right now for ACC Coach of the Year? Yeah, well, uh, one, I would just tell you about Hubert. I think he's done, uh, 
done a great job, and uh, we probably have a lot of empathy for each other, uh, taking over two programs that are as good as any program in the country. And with that comes uh, a lot of exciting things, right? You, you get to coach great players, and you have people that care about your, your program and the success of it. Also comes a lot of scrutiny. And uh, I think he's done just a great job coaching his guys, uh, focusing on what matters, uh, and uh, and his he's got his team rolling. He's got his team playing really well. And I don't think they give out Coach of the Year awards or Player of the Year awards halfway through, you know. But for him, he's done as you can't say he hasn't done as good of a job as anybody. He's done a terrific job, and I have a ton of respect for him and uh, who he is as coach and. Also, who he is as, as a person. He's a, he's a good dude, and uh, it's a lot of mutual respect and honor to play against him and coach against him. John, uh, UNC lost at Georgia Tech. You guys had lost to Arkansas and Georgia Tech as a highly ranked team. There's been a lot of that in the country this year with really good teams going on the road against unranked teams and stumbling. It's never been easy to play on the road. Is it different this year at all? Well, it – it is different just because it's happened more. And I, I think you asked then why has it happened more? And uh, I think I think it's safe to say there's uh, – with the transfer portal and uh, with the COVID year, there's probably more parity overall. There's not as big of a, a gap in terms of talent. And when you think about talent, also experience plays a factor in that. Uh, but I think the other thing that happens when a couple teams win or lose early – let's say you mentioned the top 10 teams, uh, it gives belief to everybody else. And so then it's, uh, you feel like it's supposed to happen as a team, as opposed to maybe a couple years ago, it's not happening as much. There's more doubt in your mind going into that game. So right now, I think everybody in the country feels any game they play, they can win because those kinds of games have happened through the whole season. So, so it creates a belief. It creates a togetherness no matter – you know, if you look at a lot of these losses, and go back and look, the game before, the, the, the team that, the unranked team that won, they've lost by 25 points the game before, or played horrible, or they've lost three in a row, or they've lost, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it, it does not matter what happens the game before, because there's that belief uh, that they can still win. And I think that happens when there's more of those losses that happen early in the year. John, Obviously, there have been a lot of great games recently in the series, but it is the first time both teams are ranked since 2019. Do you get a sense, do you, like, personally get any sense of a different heightened level of anticipation for this one? Have you heard anything about that, or you not feed into that? Well, look, I mean, you know it, of course, and um, I feel like there's always a hype and a buzz and, and excitement, but, uh, you know, for me, this is how it should be. You know, this this is how it should be with, with our two programs, and what they've done through the years. And I remember many times, Dan back as a player, assistant coach, uh, obviously this is now year two as a head coach. Um, there's been a bunch of these games, but uh, you feel like this is just how it should be. And I think there's a lot of excitement. I think there's a lot of um, the timing of this is great. Uh, but the truth is the preparation is still, it's, it's one game in the win column. And you can't make it bigger than what it is. And you have to treat it with the same respect and level of preparation you would for any game. But obviously, it's, uh, it's an exciting thing uh, for us, and um, I would think the same for them. Okay, thank you all. Hey, Tyrese, I wanted to talk to you about your defense and how, how strong you got in that area of your game last year. Did the injury set you back in that part of the game at all, and how are you feeling that way uh, as we go into this game? Yeah, it definitely set me back. Uh, I couldn't move. I couldn't move properly at all, really. Uh, I think laterally and – and just change the direction was my, my biggest struggle. Um, I think I'm good now, obviously, you know, guarding Couture and stuff like that last game. And um, I think just getting getting used to the pain was a big thing for me. And um, I think, you know, I'm, I'm ready for Saturday and, and it should be a good game. Jeremy, you've played over there and played in this rivalry now for a while, longer than anybody here. Uh, when you look back at it, how has it changed? Because it's kind of gone through a – you know, a, a metamorphosis where you guys were the, 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 the kings and they were the upstart and then changed and they went to the Final Four. Last year, I don't think either one of you were ranked and now both of you are ranked. So how has this changed and how did 
do you kind of feel a kinship also with with Armando and RJ since you guys have gone against each other for a long time? Yeah, I mean, it's been uh, obviously it's been one of the best rivalries in in all of sports. Uh, but I haven't really even seen a change like that. I mean, it's always a UNC Duke rivalry. It doesn't matter if top rank, not top rank. Like it's always going to be a bloodbath every time we, every time we step across those lines. So I mean, I'm just excited to even compete in this rivalry. Um, it's going to be a a crazy matchup on Saturday, and I can't wait for it. Do you, do you have any kind of relationship with those two guys that have been there, or, or just yeah. on the court? Uh, for, I mean, for sure. Obviously, I play with Mondo. Um, in high school, RJ. I've been playing against RJ all my life. So I mean, I've I've known those two guys for. Forever, but um, like I said, stepping in between those lines with those guys is always the competition. It's always a battle, and uh, I mean, it's something that you always you always want to you always want to play like play with uh, people like that and play against people like that because uh, you know the, the stakes are so high, especially in this rivalry. For either one of you guys, coach mentioned after Monday night's game that every team evolves, and twenty games into this season, how how do you guys feel like you've evolved this year? Um, I think we we're we're trending in the right direction. We obviously. Um, in the beginning of the year, um, I mean, you got you to just find yourself, find your identity at the beginning of the year. And then uh, one of our key guys goes down. I mean, Tyrese, you know how special he is to our team. I mean, the, the things that he does on the court. Um, and when, you got, when, you, when you're missing a guy like that, um, kind of in the middle of the season, when you're trying to find yourself, it, it can kind of mess the team up. But I think the, the freshmen have kind of grown up early um, throughout the year. Like, they they stepped up a lot, especially in, in early times against, I mean, Hofstra, Charlotte, Baylor, like, uh, Queen, Syracuse, like, uh, when he when he was when he was getting back, I mean, uh, the freshmen stepped up a lot and they they grew up a lot. So um, I think we're turning in the right direction. Obviously, we're all healthy now. Um, Tyrese is back. I'm back. Uh, Mark is back. So it's gonna be a special thing going forward. Uh, you mentioned the freshmen. What is your message specifically to Caleb and Jared, both of you having experience in this rivalry? What do you tell them ahead of a game like this? Um, I think the biggest thing is just be positive. Uh, I think next play mentality is a big thing too. Obviously, going to an environment like UNC, it's it's like no other, and you know there's a lot of outside noise that can creep in, and just blocking all that out, and you know just staying within the 15 guys and in, in the locker room, and 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 just the coaches. I think that's the biggest thing, just just staying positive. What kind of differences have you guys noticed in UNC this year when you're watching film? Um, I think they play with a, a really fast pace. Um, they push the tempo, and I think they're the number one offensive rebound team in our in our um, in our conference too, so you know, just being being able to make sure we we crush the boards and and make sure our D, D trans is on point. Uh, that's what I've seen. This is for either one of you. I don't know if you guys pay attention to it, but when UNC's playing a game against Georgia Tech and they lose, I mean, do you guys want them to win that game? And so that the intensity of this game is so much higher. Or is that something you guys even care about? Or, I mean, is there anything that you guys look at? Yeah, no, we're not really focused on. If they win or lose or like that, I mean, we're focused on ourselves. Obviously, we wanted to get the win and get the win on Monday in, um, in Blacksburg. Obviously, we haven't had a a, a crazy experience up in Blacksburg, but uh, definitely we just wanted to get the win um, in Blacksburg and get ready for Saturday. Obviously, I mean, you know, you're gonna watch all the ACC games and see what see what goes on, but you don't really care if they win or lose. You, it's gonna be a battle Saturday regardless if they win or not. So um, it's not like if they if they lost, like it's gonna be. Any any easier if they if they didn't so um, we're ready for this matchup and just got to get got to get ready mentally and physically. Jeremy, you said you I mean you've known RJ for a long time and his production level this year is much better than the country conference. Yeah. Uh, do you guys communicate in the off season at all? Did you know the kind of work he was doing to get ready to have? This kind of in this game? <laughs> nah, I mean obviously I've done some. I've, you probably seen done some like NIO deals with him and stuff like that. That's the only time I've really like communicated with him or like that. But n nothing in the off season, like not really worried about his training regimen or anything. Um I know he I know he's working. Obviously it's paying off. He's he's having an all American season right now. I mean he's playing better pretty much one of the best basketball brand of basketball he's ever played in um at UNC. So I mean hats off to him but um just wanna kinda get ready for that matchup uh this weekend for sure. Jeremy, of all the games you've played against these guys, uh, is there any one or any in particular that kind of stand out as the most memorable or your favorite? Um, I mean, all the all the matches are, are memorable. I mean, obviously the, the the Final Four game, just being in that moment was was definitely special and surreal. I mean, playing against them in the Final Four is definitely you don't you don't picture that coming into the, into the beginning of the season, but um, just playing them um, in the Final Four was definitely probably the most memorable for sure.
Tyrese, with you being from Australia, is Duke UNC as big of a thing in Australia? I mean, besides just your family watching the game, is that a national, uh, international brand? Kind of thing? Um, I mean, people watch it. I, I wouldn't say it's to the caliber it is over here, but I mean, a lot of people definitely watch it. Yeah. Jeremy, you've you've won there, you've won here. Is there a difference? Do you prefer one or the other? <laughs> nah, I just want to come in, come in there and get the win. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's home or away. Um, I mean, it's. I love love getting love getting wins on the road. I mean, obviously getting a win on the road in the, in the ACC is, I mean, that's one of the hardest things to do for sure. But uh, just coming out of there with a win is definitely definitely special for sure.